Good evening and welcome to the class of 2020 Rusk Rehabilitation Graduation. I would like to invite Dr. Stephen Flanagan, the chair of our department and Howard Rusk Professor of Rehabilitation Medicine to say a few words. Dr. Flanagan. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Well, thank you everybody and uh, uh, in particular for attending what I will call a very special and well, needless to say unique graduation night. Uh, like many of you, we expected to be on a boat enjoying the New York City skyline as we celebrated the accomplishments of our graduating residents and fellows. Instead, uh, we're gathered virtually but I think we can still all acknowledge that we're um, that we're here to celebrate our residents. Um, I can also say that we are in extraordinary times. To our residents, you've had 32 months of great training in physical medicine and rehabilitation, or pediatric fellow, 20 months in our brain injury and sports medicine fellows, eight months of expected training in your subspecialties. But I think we can all agree uh, that the last four months have been well anything but typical. Uh, very few among us would have predicted the COVID pandemic in New York City that it did. Hospitals, including those of NYU Langone, were overflowing with critically ill patients suffering from a disease we knew very little about. We didn't know what the medical problems our patients would face would be, uh, what treatments would be effective, or quite frankly, how much risk to ourselves as healthcare providers we were placing ourselves at by caring for these patients. But despite all the unknowns, you all dived in and did what was right for our patients and for public health. Many of our residents and faculty, along with Rusk nurses and therapists, volunteer to care for the sickest patients, either on the acute medical floors or during their recovery on one of our inpatient rehab units. Your contribution the incredible effort of our healthcare system and Rusk demonstrates several very important attributes of our field. With any one of you individually, I'll highlight two. One is that physical medicine and rehabilitation and physiatry are essential components to the healthcare triad, triad of optimizing public health, improving patient experiences, and enhancing efficiency which we all know is a governmental euphemism for decreasing costs throughout the continuum of care for an illness or disability. But I'd also add the response of our residents and faculty, as well as everybody else on the rehabilitation team indicates that you chose to enter medicine for all the right reasons. You selflessly put yourselves at risk to serve the sick using the knowledge and skills you obtained through years of dedicated study and devotion to healthcare. I'm not sure that there is a better description of the type of physician we should all strive to be than just that. That latter attribute is also evident in your experiences at Rusk. You've attended to the most diverse population of patients you'll encounter anywhere in the world, from people of immense wealth to the poorest of poor, citizens of our country and those who wish to be, but maybe are undocumented people with different skin colors, religious, sexual orientation and identity, cultural backgrounds and heritages. And in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, a rising awareness of racial injustices have belatedly awoken Americans and people throughout the world of the need to recognize bias in whatever form it takes and to act and to address it. One small but important part of that solution is for all of us as physicians, regardless of our level of training or years of experience, to take what we've learned by attending to this wealth of diversity in New York City and NYU and Rusk, and never forget that we will always have an obligation to treat those who need our care, regardless of their individual demographics. In all honesty, can anyone say someone doesn't deserve the benefit of our skills and knowledge if they need it? So as we close in on the end of this phase of your training, I'll offer my uh, deepest and heartfelt congratulations to each of you. Well done. You are well prepared for what will come next, whether it's additional training 
for the initiation of your career as an independent practitioner, in either case, I am fully confident in your abilities as knowledgeable and skillful physiatrist with the unique secret sauce ingredient that comes from training at Rusk, NYU Langone, and New York City in general that will elevate you among your peers. Congratulations on a job well done. I don't think that any of us could be more proud of your accomplishments uh, through your entire training, particularly in the last several months. Well done. Congratulations to all of you. You make us proud. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Flanagan. A few words about me for those who are watching and are not part of our medical education world. I went to medical school and completed PM&R residency here at NYU and worked my way up to my current role as a residency program director and a vice chair of education. You can think of what I do as a combination of a homeroom teacher and a school principal. I have seen generations of residents come train here. And I have to say that your class is unusual not only because of the remarkable people, but also because of your ability to work together so well. For example, the chief resident group that is graduating is absolutely amazing in their ability to work together and get things done. The positive change you have brought to our program is staggering. Thank you. As Dr. Flanagan said, your last few months of residency have been unique. Then again, maybe not so unique. This is in fact the third time there is a cataclysmic event that hits us as a residency program in New York City. And again, just like during the post 9-11 weeks and post hurricane Sandy months, everyone just pulled together and did what needed to be done. I don't have any superior wisdom to share with you, now my colleagues and peers. I know that after the training you have had in the last several months, you will be able to go anywhere, help anyone, and handle anything that comes your way. Go out there and change the world. We will begin with the fellow graduates. And next, I would like to invite Dr. Renat Sukhoff, Pediatric Rehabilitation Fellowship Director. Dr. Sukhoff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Flanagan. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Moroz, and uh, for all residents and obviously fellows. Uh, my uh, heartfelt thank you for all the dedication and time that you have spent working with very difficult patients in a very difficult situations. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, that you have confronted throughout uh, the whole um, uh, the whole experience in in uh, in PMNR at Rusk. So I would like to present uh, Dr. Afu Asante. Dr. Afu Asante was born in New Jersey. She lived in Atlanta with her family and went to medical school in Michigan. She graduated from physical medicine and rehabilitation program at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, and then matched to NYU Langone Rusk Pediatric Rehabilitation Fellowship. When I received notification about Dr. Asante to match to our program, I was very surprised. For whatever reason, during uh, the matching um, interviews, I thought that she is not going to be interested to spend two years of her postgraduate training in New York. I was wrong. And I'm surprised. And actually, I was not surprised to see her to thrive in New York for whatever reason when I actually first time encountered her clinical skills and abilities. 
I firmly believe that Dr. Asante inpatient, as well as outpatient experiences, along with a breadth of knowledge in pediatric rehabilitation following Rusk's, Rusk experience, will allow her to become one of the leaders in the field of uh, medicine in pediatric rehabilitation and pediatric physiatry. Being a program director in pediatric rehabilitation, I have to review performance from the optics of three pillars of academic medicine, clinical work, education, and research. Let me briefly review some of Dr. Asante's clinical accomplishments. Dr. Asante is calm, collected, easygoing physician. She was well-liked by the nurses, therapists, and faculty in all settings that she was exposed within the last 24 months. She has always been dedicated to her patients. She's compassionate and empathic. Dr. Asante advocates for well-being of each and every child with special needs. The knowledge that she has obtained in both inpatient and outpatient rotations with all of our faculty members at Rusk will be indispensable for her, what I believe to be a very bright future. She's a great pediatric physiatrist, an awesome human being. Thank you for her parents. Thank you for her full genes. And uh, thank you, Dr. Asante, being such a great, dedicated pediatric physiatrist and colleague. Dr. Asante became really a talented educator. I saw her exponential growth of knowledge and confidence working with PMNA residents and students. Here, I'm going to quote one of the residents. Dr. Asante is an anchor that explains how clinic works, how to operate the floor logistically and held the service together. I learned more from her than many of the attendings, always willing to clarify a point. I'm sure she will continue to excellence. In research, Dr. Asante has been engaged in original research and was part of the team of two IRB approved projects. Following additional data collection and analysis, I hope that we will be able to publish a very unique data. Her clinical research accomplishments are solid and should be definitely acknowledged. She co-authored one paper, presented interesting case reports in several national meetings. We expect her to receive a response for a very detailed review pa paper on the topic of telemedicine and pediatric physiatry. And soon, we are expecting to get response from editorial board from, about her another paper. I truly admire uh, Dr. Fu's dedication and collaborative spirits while working together on research papers. Thank you so much. At the end, I would like to, of this virtual uh, unusual presentation for the graduating residents, I would like to cite one of our residents, and I think that it sums it up. Dr. Asante is an amazing fellow, mentor, friend, teacher, and clinician. Her knowledge of pediatric rehabilitation is extraordinary. Her compassion is unrivaled. Her willingness to teach and help residents and attendings, even when she is not expected to, is truly inspirational, selfless. She has a genuine spirit. She is a ball of positivity. And she is one of the major reasons I was able to survive here. And why you is truly losing an invaluable asset of Dr. Asante. Dr. Asante will be joining NIH as a staff clinician in August of this year. Thank you, Afur, from the bottom of my heart. You will be truly missed by all of us. Good luck and please stay in touch. Let's celebrate you and your hard work and dedication today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sukov. Next, I'd like to invite Dr. Brian Im, the Fellowship Director for Brain Injury Medicine. Dr. Im. well as on the video screen. So it kind of speaks to, I think, how we have, uh, you know, in this day and age, have to do things a little bit differently, or actually a lot differently. Um, and uh, that's kind of what I want to highlight for our, our brand new fellow this year, Jen Yu, as one of her strengths is her ability to adapt to any situation possible. Um, quite honestly, you know, I, I don't think anyone could have had a more, um, except for the people, present company excluded, uh, could have had a more difficult fellowship year um, uh, in regards to all the different things that happened this year and how how it kind of evolved over time into what it is now. Um, and certainly with Jen um, going from being, uh, you know, coming in uh, from an outside institution, really having to learn our system 
uh, to become a, a you know a fellow here. Um, she did that you know very quickly. The transition was very smooth for her, and that's a credit to her. Not because I think you know we do such a great job, but uh, because she really uh, you know one of her strengths is, is her ability to kind of stay calm under pressure and to be able to make uh, you know a situation any situation work for her. Um, I've never really seen her get to the point where she's been stressed or you know um, uh, having difficulty to the point where. Uh, she breaks down um, and can't do her job and can't function, and that's a credit to her. I think uh, makeup and, uh, and how she, uh, how, you know, what kind of a clinician and kind of a doctor she is. Um, having said that, then her fellowship year, you know, kind of evolved as everyone else has this year into becoming, uh, you know, half fellowship, half, uh, you know, COVID, uh, um, COVID clinician, COVID uh, medical triage. Uh, um, a doctor, and that's uh, you know again to her credit, she took that quickly and easily. She um, you know became one of the volunteers on the medicine floors, um, and really you know in my conversations with her throughout that time, um, I you know she again displayed the same type of grace under uh, under fire, grace under pressure in terms of you know, uh, doing uh, what you know she's done all along, which is uh, being the best clinician possible in those situations. Um, and then again, she had to transition again to when. Uh, you know, the COVID crisis started to settle down a little bit. As we all know with rehab, when things settle down in the acute care side, they tend to kind of grow on the rehab side and become more, um, um, you know, more uh, busy on the rehab side. And uh, that certainly happened with us. And uh, there became a significant need at Bellevue for, uh, you know, brain injury physician uh, to kind of step in and help them uh, with their patient population uh, as they became you know, in terms of uh, COVID unit as well as uh, ongoing brain re rehabilitation patients. And again, Jen again evolved and changed uh, and with the same type of grace, she, you know, took that on and became one of the, you know, uh, you know best attendings that I have ever uh, worked with. Um, and, you know, ironically during her fellowship year, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's really, really the role that she took on toward the end of this year. Um, you know, I've, I've had conversations with her all along and, Every step along the way, again, she's taking it in stride and just thrives in, under situations of pressure. Uh, comments from the residents, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten uh, some of the comments from the residents as well as from other faculty, and everyone has the same themes across the board. Uh, again, she's very calm. She's very collected. Uh, she, no matter what the situation was, she was very professional and did the best, uh, um, you know, was, and did the best in terms of clinical care that uh, anyone has seen. Um, in terms of her uh, you know, interaction as an academic academician. She, you know, had got praise across the board from the residents in terms of her teaching, uh, both not both in terms, and this is actually very special, I think, is, you know, you can be a good teacher um, and you could be a good person, right? And you could be, a, a you know, somebody who people can go to and feel comfortable with. Uh, and not everybody has both those skills. And I think Jen really uh, shows both of those skills, which is, you know, I think important to have both sides of it if you're going to be in a effective good teacher. And certainly I think Jen uh, showed that and proved that, uh, especially at the end of this year over at Bellevue. And that's the comments that I got from all, uh, all the residents over at Bellevue was that she was just amazing in that role and really, uh, I think, added to their learning experience, which, you know, in this uh, environment, you can see how that would be, that's even a special thing in and of itself. Um, and, uh, you know, personally, I know, I think uh, as with every fellow, but uh, certainly, especially in this situation with everything we've been through, uh, you know, I've gotten to know Jen very well, and obviously I've grown very attached to her in terms of her uh, uh, being a colleague of mine. Uh, she's grown from being a, my, our fellow to our colleague, and I think that, you know, we're going to miss her. I'm definitely going to miss her. I know everyone else I talk to is going to definitely going to miss her as a colleague of ours. Uh, so uh, good luck in California, Jen. I think that you're going to do great and be an amazing as an attending. Uh, one of the things I talked to all the faculty members about is how uh, how how kind of amazing it is that, at this stage in your career, you really are one of the better attendings that I've seen across the board. So congratulations, Jen. Good luck. And uh, you know, we're going to miss you, but uh, we're so grateful that I had you here this year with us. Thank you, Dr. Yim. For sports medicine, I'd like to invite Dr. Salvador Portugal, director of the Sports Medicine Fellowship. Thanks, Dr. Moroz. Uh, I think it's an understatement to say it's been quite the year. Bruce Lee once said, 
Don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Prior to fellowship, I sat down with Serene and discussed plans for the upcoming year, and Serene stated that he was up for a challenge. As the sports medicine follows, Serene was responsible for managing the St. Joseph's College Brooklyn Athletic Department, which cares for athletes across 13 different teams. The head athletic trainer stated that this has been the most active year in the training room since the fellowship started in 2014. Serene dealt with athletes with complex medical and psychiatric issues, players with facial trauma, fractures, multiple ACL tears, and athletes requiring spine surgery. He also became quite skilled with the use of musculoskeletal ultrasound and fluoroscopic guided spine injections. Most recently, he had to use his creative administrative skills to manage the high number of athletes seeking treatment in our training room for concerns of COVID symptoms. Having won the Howard Rusk Resident of the Year Award for the past three years, I had expected very high expectations of Serene, and Serene has not failed to meet that expectation, but has exceeded it. He will be taking the next few months off to enjoy being a newlywed with his new wife, Sir, Sir Shivani, which I have unfortunately been, uh, was not able to meet tonight, uh, but I see her in the camera, uh, before joining Northeast Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in Westchester, New York. I know he will continue to do great things. Congratulations, Serene. Thank you, Dr. Portugal. We will now proceed to the resident graduates presentation. First up, we have Elizabeth Chan, who hails from Chicago, Illinois. Liz is an ice skater and a doctor. A faculty once said that Liz is intelligent, kind, and good with children and families. Her spirit and heart shine bright. Compassionate, she was among the first residents who stepped up to volunteer during the COVID pandemic. We will all miss her baking talents. Be it a holiday or a random day in the clinic or during didactics, her delectable bites were a staple. Her colleagues describe her as the class dancer, note her compassionate spirit, calmness, and ability to get things done. Congratulations, Liz. Next is Luke Kane, originally from St. Paul, Minnesota. My most vivid memory of Luke is when he, as an intern in Brooklyn, joined a group of Rusk residents who went sailing with me. When we stopped to swim, Luke suddenly took off at speed in a dramatic display of various swim strokes. Some ran for a life ring, some for a radio, and some for binoculars as he disappeared over the horizon. And of course, he's the only resident of all times to buy his own ultrasound machine so he could put in some extra practice at home. His peers describe him as adventurous, somnolent during lectures, pragmatic, and someone who lives life in style. Congratulations, Luke. Next is Jin Bin Lu, who came to us from Boston, Massachusetts. Jin is a quiet force. He is kind, thoughtful, and very practical. He has impeccable bedside manner, patience, and clarity. As described by a junior resident, the chillest PGY4 I've ever met. As described by one of his classmates, Jin one time went out and bought his patient McDonald's so they could take their chemotherapy medications, and he did it without telling anyone. The only reason I know was because I saw him walking out of the elevator with the bag. Jin is described best by his co-residents as reliable, intelligent, a great listener, and a truly kind soul. 
Congratulations, Jen. Next is Samantha Mastanduno, born and raised in Staten Island. Sam did an amazing job with didactics during COVID pandemic and ensured that residents continued learning despite all. She stands out for her ability to recalibrate in difficult situations. While most people dislike the commute, she loved coming to Brooklyn because she could visit her lovely grandmother. Described by one of her classmates as most likely to be successful, she often goes above and beyond to support her colleagues. One junior resident described the time on their first Saturday call, never having used electronic medical record, that Sam came in and taught them how to use the electronic medical record she is noted to be organized, diligent, warm, and a strong leader. Congratulations, Sam. Next is Raj Panchal, who hails from New Jersey. The first thing that pops into my mind when I think of Raj is, I love that guy, repeated over and over again by the senior Dr. Kiriakides, for whom Raj used to work. Raj has a unique and balanced perspective on difficult situations. He stepped up to the challenge during the interview season and ensured that co-residents and faculty were prepared for all interviews. During the pandemic, not only did he selflessly deploy to the medicine wards, but also provided many a haircut to his co-residents. In addition to his tonsorial talents, Raj is well known for being the coolest guy in the program and among the best at ping pong. His peers describe him as reliable, a great advocate for his colleagues and patients, balanced, and the least likely to suffer from male pattern boldness. Congratulations, Raj. Next is Daniel Pastorius by way of St. Paul, Minnesota. My first feedback to Dan was that he liked to argue. He did not look at all surprised and said that his girlfriend told him that all the time. This of course made him such an amazing resident advocate. Dan is praised by his colleagues for being decisive, pragmatic, inquisitive, and most likely to captain the U.S. curling team in 2022. He's also noted to be the most likely to teach you something valuable and currently has the largest house and most property in his class. Congratulations, Dan. Next is Kathy Plavnik, who is originally from East Brunswick, New Jersey. A friend of mine from medical school called me shortly before the ranking list was due and said that his good friend's daughter, Kathy, is applying for our residency program. Well, he was too late. Unbeknownst to him, we had already put her high on our rank list, and we were not disappointed not once in three years. Kathy is well regarded among the residents to be the best snowboarder by a solid margin. Additionally, she is known for her sunny smile, Instagram, and leadership skills. Without her, class trips and group outings would not have come together nearly so well. She was identified by two classmates as their spirit animal. Congratulations, Kathy. Next up is Kyle Seiko, who grew up in La Palma, California. Kyle is always steady. He comes across as confident, but he's honest about what he knows and does not. He tirelessly works on improving himself and the care he provides to others. He does have a light side and fun humor, and of course, he's always the life of the party. One of his classmates stated that he is one of the smartest physicians they've ever had the pleasure to work with. 
He is noted by his colleagues as a great team player, a terrific teacher, passionate, and having the largest biceps in the program, definitely larger than Jordan's. Congratulations, Kyle. Next up is Jared Tannenbaum, Tannenbaum, originally from Western Florida. When Jared rotated with me, I remember being blown away by his warmth, kindness, and ability to connect with and help patients. Jared is keenly aware of the subtle difficulties affecting those around him, and trying to help is as natural to him as breathing. Multiple residents praise his knowledge of ornithology and awareness of trivia facts. He's known amongst his colleagues as witty, artistic, and most likely to drop random knowledge bombs or star in a game show. If Jared gets bored with medicine, he'll be an amazing tour guide at the Museum of Natural History. Congratulations, Jared. Next is Amy Tenaglia from nearby Westchester, New York. Amy and I have had a running argument where one of us is trying to convince the other how great Amy Tenaglia is. She won the Best Resident Award every year, just like Serene, and successfully advocated for patients and residents. She also accomplished the impossible by unifying and simplifying inpatient note templates across multiple sites, represented the program nationally, volunteered to care for patients with COVID on the medicine wards, and matched to a top pediatric rehabilitation medicine fellowship program. One resident described her as the mother hen of the program. Another identified that she held the program together, particularly during the pandemic. Revered by her colleagues as sincere, understanding and thorough, Amy is a hard worker, no nonsense, and always at the top of the game. In describing her leadership, one junior resident noted, when I forgot something, Amy blamed herself. Truly an incredible feature of a physician and a leader. Congratulations, Amy. Next is Corey Alger, born and raised in the great city of New York. Many of you may not know that Corey did not spend his first year of PM&R training at Rusk. And my strongest recollection about Corey is the telephone conversation I had with his previous residency director as I told them that I was planning to accept his application for transfer. The conversation was full of grief on their end and of decently restrained joy on mine. We were both right. Corey is well regarded by his co-residents for his intellect, willingness to help, his evidence-based approach to patient care, and as the king of board review questions. He is thought to be the best all-around teacher in the program and praised for his command of Spanish. He is El Otro Lugar at AAP 2019 in Puerto Rico is famous. Congratulations, Corey. Last but not least is Emily Wong, born and raised in Belmont, Massachusetts. When I think of Emily, I think of courage. She has been going through a patch in her life which is at once joyful and very difficult and has done so with remarkable grace and strength. Despite these difficulties, she's able to rise to the occasion with gusto. As Christopher Reeves said, a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. One resident will never forget how you helped my hypothermic and crumbling body to the medical tent at the New York City Marathon. I don't think I could have made it over without you. Emily is noted by her peers as thoughtful, resilient, sweet, and most likely to quietly achieve all her dreams. Congratulations, Emily. And congratulations, Russ class of 2020.
Oops. Next, we will proceed Next, with, we will um, proceed with um, departmental awards. Departmental awards. I'd like to invite the invite chief, the chief president to present the best teacher awards for 20. I'm happy to present. I'm happy to present the award for Teacher of the Year at our Brooklyn VA rotation site. This year, our class selected Dr. Kai for this award. Dr. Kai has been an invaluable and one of a kind wealth of knowledge for our residents throughout our time working with him. He has taught us to think outside the box and really focus on appropriately diagnosing patients' pain generators. I know he has taught each of us numerous physical exam maneuvers for the residents. For those of us pursuing acupuncture certification, he has served as an additional faculty member, teaching us how to best mix the concepts of Western and Eastern medicine. It is my honor to present this award to Dr. Kai for all of his contributions to our education. Congratulations, Dr. Kai. Next up, I will be presenting Teacher of the Year for the Manhattan VA Hospital System. This year, we have selected Dr. Fang. Dr. Fang is a great teacher. He takes time to explain differential diagnoses, and he is always willing to work with residents to perform injections and demonstrate proper technique. While on VA inpatient, I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Fang, who is extremely supportive to the residents. He also helped me to understand how to decide which rehab consults were appropriate for rehab. Dr. Fang is an excellent leader who has always been approachable to our residents and we truly enjoy working with him. Congratulations, Dr. Fang. I'm unmuting right now. I have the honor of presenting Teacher of the Year for Bellevue. This year, our class has selected Dr. Calva. Dr. Calva has always been a pleasure to work with and learn from. She's a thorough and patient teacher with the residents always encouraging us to think about the etiology behind our patients' illnesses and encouraging independent management. Not to mention, she has a wealth of knowledge, particularly of the musculoskeletal system that we all aspire to have. On a personal note, she's been my mentor over the past three years, and I've greatly valued her guidance and advice over our moonstruck coffee dates. Congratulations, Dr. Calva. On our NYU outpatient rotations, we work with a variety of general and subspecialty rehab clinics, including electrodiagnostics, pain management, pediatrics, sports medicine, stroke, and traumatic brain injury. This year's outpatient teacher of the year is Dr. Kingsbury, one of the sports medicine attendings. He has a keen interest in teaching, particularly as it relates to ultrasound, procedures, and regenerative medicine. He takes time out of his schedule to provide resident lectures, during our regular scheduled didactics, during our ultrasound lecture training, as well as with our sports medicine club. Congratulations, Dr. Kingsbury. Last but not least, I will be presenting Teacher of the Year for NYU Inpatient. This year, we have selected Dr. Prilik. Dr. Prilik is an exceptional attending to work with and to learn from. She always takes the time to discuss each case with the residents and to explain her reasoning for her medical decisions. This encourages the residents to do the same and allows them to take an active part in managing the patients. She is always available to discuss anything from medical questions and career advice to travel recommendations. She's proven herself as a leader in pulmonary and transplant rehab and continues to be a, a role model to all of us at Russ. Congratulations, Dr. Pillar. We have uh, created the Howard Rusk Award for Resident Excellence several years ago, to recognize residents in each year of training who most embody the spirit of Howard Rusk and rehabilitation medicine. This year for the PGY2 class, I would like to congratulate Haruki Ishii for winning the award. Congratulations.
For the PGY three-year class, I would like to congratulate Richard Ellis. Congratulations, Richard. And for the PGY four-year class, despite the spoiler earlier, congratulations, Amy. Third year in a row. I also want to uh, say a few words of thanks. Firstly, I want to thank the faculty sponsors who during this difficult time supported the graduation gift, which is this lovely NYU themed diploma frame. Uh, I was overwhelmed by the enthusiasm when I tentatively uh, asked for money, which I've never done before. It was amazing that some people asked if they could give to more than one resident and there was a lot of uh, a lot of really good energy trying to give back to the residents which was very gratifying to me so thank you to every single person on this list i also don't want to forget to commend our volunteers emnr physicians who during the toughest time of the pandemic, volunteered and went to the front lines to take care of the patients uh, with COVID-19. And as you can see, we have uh, attendings, Dr. Fine, Dr. Kalikoff, Dr. Kingsbury, Dr. Lopez, Dr. Onafader, Dr. Solomon, Dr. Sokoloff, and Dr. Weiss, as well as residents and a fellow. Liz Chan, Andrew Duart, Rich Ellis, Jamie John, Ethan Koch, Raj Panchal, Amy Tinaglia, Jen Yu, and Perry Zellinger. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up when you were needed. And lest I forget, I'd like to thank our education team who is working behind the scenes to make this happen. Judy, Sandy, Haley, and Jeffrey, as well as the graduation planning committee, which made this possible, Andrew, Cynthia, Amy, and Haley. And speaking of Cynthia and Frank, our associate program directors for assessment and curriculum respectively, I'd like to invite them next. Good evening, everybody. Dr. Racine and I wanted to give a few parting words and ultimately give a toast to the residents. Before I give uh, my parting words, I wanted to give recognition to those, those people who are sitting next to all of the residents, the people who are phys physically or virtually sitting next to them. So med school and residency, often is seen as a, a, a pretty amazing individual effort, but we all know the truth, it's not. It takes a little village to get us to where you are and to get us to where we wanna be. It's your mom, it's your dad, it's your brother, it's your sister, it's your spouse, it's your significant other, it's your best friend, it's your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or even your pet. Um, I wanna give, recognition to those people because they are as instrumental to your success as you were. So I'm going to do something weird. I want you guys to just turn to the side of the person who's next to you physically or virtually and give them a hug, give them a high five, give them a virtual high five because they deserve it as much as you do. So thank you to the family and friends and significant others to all of the residents. So my parting words. When I was a resident, um, I know I, I sound old when I say that, uh, my, my chair uh, gave us two, two pieces of wonderful advice that I'll never forget. The first was, follow your passions and do what you love to do. I, at the time, honestly, I thought it was a little cliche, but now that I've been able to reflect over it over the last few years, I know exactly what Dr. Matthew Lee was saying. You all, must realize that you are very, very, very lucky and fortunate to be in the position to do what you want to do. 
do follow your passions. Unfortunately, many people are not, in our society aren't able to follow their passions, as we've seen in the pandemic, as well as the racial tensions. So you owe it to yourself to do what you want to do. Follow your passions. You'll be a better doctor and you'll be happier. Second piece of advice is the money will come. I've never forgotten that when Dr. Lee told us the money will come. Don't follow the dollar bill. Don't follow the cash. Follow your heart, follow your passion, follow what you really, really, really love to do because you will become a better doctor, a better person for it. And lastly, I wanna congratulate all of you. It's been, it's been a pleasure, it's been an honor, it's been a, it's been a privilege to work with each and, one of, each and every one of you. Uh, I congratulate all of you, as well as uh, the people who are sitting next to you or virtually sitting next to you as well. And on that note, I hand it over to Dr. Racine. Hello, congratulations to the graduating class. Um, I'm gonna be brief. Um, I will miss you guys. Um, I really enjoyed working with your class um, in particular. Um, you guys helped us actually grow as humans, um, as your mentors, um, which is um, speaks volumes. Um, so I'm gonna, um, I prepared a little thing. So um, one of the things I liked about your class is that you guys come from such different backgrounds and interests, um, and that has been your asset and your strength. Um, in many classes, it works kind of as um, a not so much as an asset and a strength. In your class, it really was. You guys were amazing, just amazing. Um, I'm very proud of you. I truly enjoyed being around you guys. Um, one, I was thinking about one thing that you guys have in common and what came to mind was compassion. Every single one of you is a compassionate individual. It expresses itself in very different ways, but it is very obvious in every single one of you. And I hope that you will always let that light shine. I'm getting emotional, sorry. Um, because um, our world needs it right now. Um, and the last thing I wanna say is, you only know in part what someone else knows in their heart. And which is why it's more important for you to keep shining and, and, and keep moving. Um, we're really proud of you. Um, if you prepared your glass, I'm going to give a toast. We're supposed to do a toast. So this is a toast to your class, to every single one um, of you guys. We are quite proud. What you guys like? <laughs> Thank you.
Congratulations again and good night, everyone.